Okay, now we're back. All right, so World Strides. That was just a little bit about the company. Some of the tours that kids go on, World Strides does tours all over the world. They do all different kinds of tours. So you can do language immersion tours, you can do STEM tours, art tours, sports. Um, what we're doing is a language and culture immersion tour. So we'll get to practice our Espanol a lot, which is exciting. Um, so like the video talked about, there are some really big benefits to student travel. One, the educational success. All right, students who travel are more likely to go to college. They're more likely to attain a college degree. Students have noted that when they've returned from their trips, there has been a positive impact on their performance in the classroom. Um, so we see Spanish grades go up when kids go on these immersion trips. Um, it's a career boost for kids. They're more likely to be employed full time. And there's long term benefits too, not just for career in college, but just your sense of self. Students report that they feel like more of a world citizen. They understand more about the world and other cultures, which is really important, especially in our day and age when social media is connecting us with people all across the world. So I will be the program director when we go on the trip, um, but we will have a tour director that will stay with our group 24 seven on the trip. They are locals, they live in the area, they are bilingual in English and in Spanish. Um, they are enthusiastic. They know all the ins and outs of the areas that we're going to. They have recommendations of places for us to go eat. Um, they are really our experts that get to stay with us for the entire trip, which is really nice. So when we are in Mexico, we will be staying in three or four different hotels while we're there for our span of nine days because we're hopping around the peninsula. Um, but we will be staying in three to four star centrally located hotels, which means if we're in a city, our hotel is going to be in the middle of the city. So we're not having to bus very far. We're not having to walk very far to get where we need to go to do our sightseeing. Um, they're going to be centrally located, three to four star hotels. Gives us more time <coughs> to experience and immerse ourselves and less time traveling around. Um, breakfast and dinners are included on this trip. They're included in the trip cost. Um, so those will all be provided. The only thing that is not provided is lunch. But that is because that's where they give the kids a little bit of choice and a little bit of freedom. So lunches will usually be a little bit of free time. And our tour guide will give some suggestions based off of what you're feeling. And you know, if Zeke is really wanting to try that food cart on the end of the road and Callie's like, nah, I think I want to sit down in a restaurant today. Okay, their groups can go their separate ways. So lunches are not included, but you have more freedom of choice of where you want to go. So one of the reasons I picked this company, there are lots of travel companies that do international trips like this. And I've spent hours on the phone with different companies going through all these catalogs. And the reason I picked World Strides is partly because of their LEAP activities that they do. So LEAP stands for learning through exploring and actively participating. I'm a big fan of hands-on learning. I want the kids to learn by doing. Um, especially with learning a language. You don't learn a language just by listening to it. You have to speak the language. You have to write the language. You have to do. Uh, so there are lots of experiences that the kids will have on this trip where they will be active participants in their own learning. We won't just be sitting in a classroom. Um, they will be out in the community learning and doing. All right, fun stuff. Where are we going? So if you have this paper with you. Mine is a little big up here. Yours is a little more detailed. If you want even more details after the trip, you can go on our travel website. We have our own travel website for our trip. And that gives you even more details than are on the paper. So our trip is June 9th to the 17th, 2025. Um, I've told the kids it does not interfere with state track. 
Um, that was one of the things that we were looking at when scheduling the trip because I know we've got a lot of track athletes in Spanish. Um, and it's outside of school, so we don't have to worry about catching up on school when we come back, which I think is going to be nice mm -hmm. for us. So day one, we are going to fly from Minneapolis down to Cancun. It's about a four-hour flight. All right. We are going to meet our tour director at the airport, get on our bus, and we are going to drive across the peninsula to Merida. And that's probably going to be a two to three hour bus ride. Not too bad for us Midwesterners that drive everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> day two and three, we're going to be in Merida. Um, we will have the opportunity to visit with the Santa Elena family. So visit with a local family, ask them about family life down there, talk about our family lives here in Wisconsin, and do a lot of comparing and contrasting. Um, we are going to visit Ukshmal, which is a Mayan uh, temple and Mayan ruins. So we'll get to learn a lot about um, the ancient ruins of the Mayans and that indigenous population that inhabited that peninsula in Mexico. Um, we'll visit the central market in Merida, so the kids will get to go through the market and buy things if they'd like to and talk with locals. Then we'll have our two LEAP activities. So our first LEAP activity is a Mexican school visit. So sorry guys, you do have to go to school one day while we're down there, but it'll be okay. So we're gonna go to school one afternoon and we are going to work with Spanish speaking students and teachers. They're gonna tell us about how their school works and we're gonna tell them about how Bangor works and we're gonna brag about ourselves because we're pretty cool. So. It's just a lot of getting to compare and contrast. How is our school different from school in Mexico? How are our lives different? Our second LEAP activity is called Baila Harana. So we are going to take a dance class while we are in Mexico. You guys will get to learn a traditional folk dance called La Harana. We will watch a show and you'll also get to participate. Get to do a little dancing, which will be fun. Um, we'll do a sightseeing tour of the city of Merida. It's pretty big. I have some pictures to show later. Day four, we are going to head to Chichen Itza. Um, that is the big pyramid that you see in the picture on your paper. We will also get to go to a cenote, which is an underground sinkhole, and we'll get to go swimming in that. We'll see a light and sound show at Chichen Itza. Then we'll travel to Playa del Carmen, and have a beach day. We've been pretty on the go for the first four days, so we're gonna give ourselves a beach day, a day to rest and relax before we get going again. Um, day six, it says optional excursion to Tulum and Shelha. We are going to Tulum and Shelha. Tulum is another Mayan um, city that we are going to visit, a whole bunch of ruins on a cliff overlooking the ocean, it's beautiful. Um, we're go then going to go to Shalha, which is a snorkel park. So you guys will get to do some snorkeling. And then our last two days, we are going to be taking a boat out to the island of Cozumel and spending our last two days on Cozumel. So snorkeling, beaches, sightseeing on the island. Cozumel has some of the best snorkeling and beaches in the world. So, yep, kind of ran through this already. So, the Mexican school visit, we'll go talk with other students. We'll learn how to dance the harana. So, days one through three, like I said, we're going to be in the city of Merida, and then we'll go to Uxmal. Days four through five, we will be at Chichen Itza and the cenote. Day six, we will be at the ancient city of Tulum and Shalha. So Shalha is, it's a giant bay that they've kind of closed off from the ocean. And you just get to snorkel. There's huge fish in there. There's manatees, dolphins, stingrays, you name it, it's in the water there. But they have other fun stuff too if you're not into swimming. You can just relax in the hammocks. They have tubes, you can float down the river all kinds of stuff, and a cool water slide. And then our last couple days we will spend on Cozumel. So 
So one of the unique things about World Strides is that you can earn academic credit through travel. Um, so students grades 6 through 12, oh, we'll all be 9 through 12. So students grades 9 through 12 at the time of travel, you're eligible to earn college credit um, through George Mason University. So what happens is they will contact us um, after the trip and be like, are you interested in earning college credit for this experience? And what you will do is complete an online class after the trip, complete an assignment, college credit is yours, which is pretty cool. Um, it's gonna distinguish you as an online learner, which is really important given this day and age with technology. And it's gonna give you a head start on your college path because you're already going into college with some college credits under your belt, which is important. Okay, financial assistance. So, if you look on the back of your paper, tour investment. So, for students, the trip costs $3,904. That's a big number. That's a scary number. I know. So, that includes nearly everything, okay? Airfare. All of our buses are on the peninsula. Our boats to and from Cosmo, entrances into everything that we do, all of the hotels, breakfast and dinner, right? Our tour guides, tips, everything like that, okay? What it doesn't include is airline baggage fees, lunches, and spending money. And if you need to get a passport, doesn't include that fee, okay? So, <coughs> We do, World Strides does offer financial assistance. Um, if you have an adjusted gross income of $85,000 or less, you can call when you're registering for the trip and they will walk you through the steps to apply for financial assistance and you could potentially get up to six or $700 off of your trip. So it helps. Um, there are also scholarships out there that you can apply for. So all those tools are available to you. We are going to do a whole bunch of fundraising, all right? Um, I've seen the fundraisers be really successful here, especially for kids that are going on like the band and choir trip. Their fundraising has been very successful this year. So I have no doubts that we won't be able to take a decent chunk off of this trip price for us. Now, when you're registering for the trip, you have three choices when it comes to a payment plan. If you were to go and sign up tonight, the only thing you would pay is a $99 deposit. That's all you need to pay for tonight and the protection plan if you choose to add that tonight. But you can add that up to 14 days after you sign up for the trip. So you can either choose to pay the trip in full. Our, the most common payment plan that they have people do is a monthly payment plan. So you pay your $90, $99 deposit, and then every month you can set it up automatically. So it's automated and it's gonna come out of your bank account. It goes straight to World Strides. So you don't have to pay me and then I pay the district and then the district pays World Strides. It's you to World Strides, which is nice. Um, or you can do a manual payment, which is four payments over the span leading us up to the trip. So they're gonna be bigger payments, but you only make four of them. But those are manual, so those are not linked to a bank account. So that you need to keep track of, okay, this payment is due on this day, this payment is due on this day. Any fundraising that we do comes off the final cost of your trip. So let's say Carson does a fundraiser and through all of his fundraising, he earns $500 off of his trip. If he's doing monthly payments, his last two monthly payments would go away because he earned $500. So it comes off of your final monthly payment, however much you fundraise. Another cool thing about World Strides is when you sign up for the trip, you are automatically given a gift of education fundraising page. It's like a GoFundMe. 
So you can customize it however you want, add your picture, add a little blurb, why are you going to Mexico, why is this trip important to you, what are you looking to get out of it. You can put this on Facebook, you can put it on Instagram, all over social media. All right, it's just another way for people to donate and that money is going to go specifically to you, not to the group. Okay? So support, when we arrive, we have our tour directors and they're going to be with us 24-7, like I said. They stay at the hotels with us, they're on the buses with us, they are at the excursions with us, everything. We will have a health and safety team, all right, so if a student gets sick, all right, we'll be able to get them to a doctor, um, we'll have a medical person that will be able to check them out, all right. Um, insurance. Most of you have your own insurance, but World Strides does also like cover some of those things if things were to happen down there and you're not there. Um, and then round the clock, 24-7, they have a success team. If you have a question, you call them. They are going to be able to answer. I'm also able to answer my phone. You guys will all have my number when we go if something comes up and you need to get a hold of me. Um, and there's doctors on call as well, so we'll be able to easily get your child to a doctor if something were to happen. So, protecting your investment. There are two travel protection plans that World Strides offers. You can get a, just the plain Jane travel protection plan, all right, that's going to cover you for medical, injury, or dental treatment while traveling, all right? It's gonna cover you if you are ill and can't come on the trip, if there's a death of a family member right before the trip and you can't come, all right? It's going to cover us if your passport or visa is stolen. It's going to cover you if our flight is canceled, if the whole trip gets canceled, all right, because Hopefully nothing happens to me, but you never know, right? So it'll cover you for that. Or you can get the ultimate protection plan. This allows you to cancel for any reason whatsoever, all right? 48 hours before the trip, you decide, eh, I'm not feeling it anymore. You can cancel, and you're going to get 75% of your money back, all right? So these are something to think about. Four out of five families protect their trips. I definitely, as a traveler myself, recommend that you protect your trips, okay? I'm going to talk about our behavior code of conduct in a little bit, all right? If for some reason your child makes a poor choice and either gets removed from the trip before we go or removed from the trip while we're there, all right, this protection will help you. I don't foresee that being an issue with anybody. I really don't think we're gonna have that issue, but you never know what's gonna happen. So I always, always, always recommend protecting your trip. So how to enroll? There's three ways you can enroll. You can enroll online. My, our trip website is right here. All right, so educationtravel.com slash Swanson dash 6111. You can scan that QR code right there if you want to do it on your phone. That's going to take you directly to our portal. You're going to see everything you need to see for our trip, all the information, and you'll be able to sign up from there. You can sign up over the phone, or you can sign up by snail mail. I recommend doing it online. So, a voucher code. This voucher code is what gets you the trip for $3,900. This is $250 off what the trip should cost. So, you need to put in early enrollment 2025 when you register. This code is due or is good until March 14th. So, you have time to think about it process, have those important conversations, all right? I know the kids 
kids are really excited and they want to go home and sign up right now. Take a breath. All right, talk about it because it's an investment. This is a lot of money for some of the high schoolers. This is going to be one of the biggest financial commitments you have made yet in your life. So it's a big commitment. Think about it. On the other hand, the first three people to register for the trip do get $50 off. Just take some time, but also keep that in mind. Everybody get the code down. Early enrollment 2025, good till March 14th. You can still sign up for the trip after March 14th. Um, you just won't get that $250 discount. You can sign up up until 110 days before the trip, but the longer you wait, prices might be adjusted, so you have to think about that. Um, the hotels that we are staying in are going to be posted on our trip website 10 to 30 days prior to departure, so you will know where exactly we are staying and when we will be staying there. Um, as far as safety goes, another <laughs> reason that I liked this company was because they have a very small student to chaperone ratio. So every six students that sign up for the trip, we get to bring another teacher with us. Um, so it's going to be one to six the entire trip, which I think is great. Now, a lot of kids have asked, can my parents come? No. Unfortunately not. As much as we love you parents, this is a really, really great opportunity for your kid to spread their wings, to travel on your own, while still being in that safe and controlled environment. All right, they're gonna learn leadership skills. They're gonna learn how to advocate for themselves. And they're gonna flounder a little bit, but that's good, that's good for you, all right? That culture shock is good. So this is a very good experience for them to branch out. So unfortunately parents, you will not be coming with us on this trip, but there will be plenty of teachers going depending on the amount of students that sign up. All right, now to the nitty gritty, the code of conduct. Go ahead and grab this paper out for me. When you register for the trip, I need this code of conduct to come back to me signed by the student <coughs> and the parent. All right, this is the not fun stuff that we got to talk about, but I got to talk about it. Why are rules there? Because somebody did something that made us need rules, yeah? So, behavior on any field trip is key to everyone having a fun and safe trip. There are certain behaviors that could cause your student to be removed from the trip prior to departure or removed from the trip while we are on, on the trip. Though discretion is up to me and the administration of the school district, the following behaviors can lead to removal from the trip before departure. The district is not responsible for any expenses incurred due to a student's removal from the trip. Vaping or drug use, immediate removal from the trip. All right, I will not bring you on the trip if you get caught using drugs or vaping. Not gonna happen. Alcohol consumption, not gonna happen. You are immediately off the trip. Even if I catch wind of it, all right? Uh-uh, okay? This is a school-sponsored trip. I understand that the drinking age in Mexico is 18. This is a school-sponsored trip. You will not be drinking any alcohol. I will not be drinking any alcohol, all right? We will be drinking water and juice, okay? No alcohol. Don't even get that possibility in your brain, okay? It's not happening. I have absolutely zero tolerance for it. Crimes of any sort, vandalism. Immediately you're not coming with me, all right? Physical altercations. If you get in a fight at school, mm -mm. adios. Three detentions, all right? I understand that kids have bad days. I understand that stuff goes wrong. I have bad days. Stuff goes wrong for me all the time. All right? That's why I'm giving you a three-strike system, okay? You get a detention, 
you're going to sit down and you're going to have a meeting with me. All right? And we are going to seriously talk about the potential consequences if you continue down the path that you are on. All right? Two detentions. We're going to have a conversation again with your parents and with Mr. Mullenberg and be like, hey, this is what is on the line for you. Think about all the money and time you have invested into this trip. All right? Three detentions, I'm going to look to cancel your enrollment in the trip, which would be really unfortunate. Again, I don't foresee that happening with any of you. Just got to throw it out there. While we are on the trip, these are behaviors that are expected of you. Again, no drug consumption, except for prescriptions, all right? I need to know about these prescriptions. They need to be prescribed, and they will be with us. Okay. No alcohol, no breaking curfew or failing to communicate your whereabouts. I am going to be the most clingy person you have ever dealt with in your life. Okay. I need you to tell me where you are at all times. Okay. It's annoying. It's for your safety and my sanity. All right. Respect the quiet hours. Okay. When we're in a hotel, I know it's going to be fun, we're with our friends, but there's going to be other people there as well. So just respect quiet hours. You guys are going to be so tired by the end of the day that you're going to want to sleep anyways. So just go to bed. Chill out. Uh, no hanging out of the windows of our travel vehicles or hotels. Again, that's on there, so somebody must have done it. Um, no one is allowed in your sleeping quarters except your assigned roommates. This was another big question. Do we get to pick who's in our room? Yes, but I have final say. All right? So nobody but your assigned roommates are allowed in your room. No riding on public or private transportation without a chaperone. Again, every six kids are going to have a chaperone with them at all times, so shouldn't be a big deal. All students, you need to remain with your assigned groups, okay? You can't just wander off because you saw something cool that you wanted to go check out, okay? You need to communicate. <coughs> you need to advocate for yourself. Hey, I'd really like to go over there and look in that store really quick. Can we do that? Okay. Yes, let's do it. And the whole group goes together. You do not wander off by yourself. All right? Listen to and follow the instructions of the chaperones and the tour guides. And we need to be on time. Okay, so breaking of rules one and two, drugs and alcohol on the trip, I will send you home early. I'll bring you to the airport, you will buy a ticket at your own expense, and you will go home. Okay, I do not, do not have the time or the tolerance for it, all right? I've been really thinking about this this week, and I'm not bringing kids on this trip, I'm bringing young adults, okay, and I expect you to act as such, okay? So, on the back side, we have the student agreement that says, I understand the above rules and understand the consequences. I will both abide by these rules when in Mexico. I also understand that my behavior and choices leading up to the trip may cause me to be removed from the trip before departure. I recognize that this is a Bangor School District sponsored trip. I understand that the district is not responsible for expenses incurred should I be removed from the trip. Parents. I understand that the above rules, if broken while on the school trip, may cause my child's immediate expulsion from the trip and subsequent disciplinary action. I have discussed this code of conduct with him and her, and he, she, has promised to abide by it. I understand that the district is not responsible for expenses incurred if my child is removed from the trip. Okay? It's heavy stuff, but it's important stuff. What questions do you have? Hi, sir. Our assigned groups, um, do we get to say them too? Or? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep, so when we break up into our groups of six, a lot of the times when we're at the big sites like Chichen Itza, we'll be together as one group. If we have free time to go for lunch, we might try and group us based off of who wants to go where. Um, but more often than not, yeah, you'll get a say on who you're going with. Yes. And how many would that be? 
Um, I believe it's a two credit course that they take when they come back over the summer. But I can get more information on that and let you know the specifics <coughs> about the college credits. Is that for a traditional college form? That I'm also not sure about. I will find out more about that. And as far as communication goes, yes. mobile phone functions, you know, you just kind of basically have them. And yes, they are allowed to bring their phones. Um, I know I have Verizon, and Verizon does unlimited data in Mexico. So whenever I've been to Mexico, my phone has always worked fairly well. Um, so you'll always have my number if you need to contact me, but all of the hotels should have Wi-Fi so the kids will be able to check in and I'll be badgering them as well. Like when we get back to the hotel, you need to send a message home. Let them know how your day was, let them know what you did. All right, just check in at home. It's important for the kids to check in. We don't know how our parents are going to be without us. They might be lost. So. Communication, I'm, yeah, should be okay. I don't know, maybe Erin's mom is excited for her to be gone. Yep. How far in advance can they sign up before the trip? They can sign up tonight. The latest they can sign up. Oh, the latest. You can sign up up to 110 days before the trip. trip every two years. Um, so if Mexico is somewhere you visit often or if this just isn't in the cards for you financially right now, um, our freshmen and eighth graders that are in the room have the opportunity to forego this trip and potentially go on the next one or go on both if it's something that you're willing to commit to. But my goal is to do trips every two years. In a different country? or Two different countries. Oh yeah. many kids per, uh, per room in the hotel room? So in the hotel rooms, it will be three to four kids per room. So the rooms will be two double bedrooms or a double and a single. Um, so kids will be sharing beds. Girls will be in rooms with girls. Boys will be in rooms with boys. Um, but so it'll be three to four students per hotel room. Yes? How do the fundraising come off? based on the different payment plans. You only use the one of like the 250 a month and they might you know, eliminate the two payments at the end. How does that, I think there's like three or four different payment options. Yep. How does that come off then based on if they fundraise for the next few years? Right, so if you choose to do the manual payment plan where it's four payments over the next year, four bigger payments, it works the same. It's just going to come off of that final payment. So if your last payment is $600 and you fundraise $500, your last payment will only be $100. Um, as far as paying in full, if you do that right now and then we fundraise, I don't know. I think it would just go to you to use for spending money on the trip. Um, as far as spending money goes for lunches and spending money, I recommend Ten to thirty dollars a day. That's going to be more than enough for lunch and give you a little wiggle room for souvenirs if you want, or some snacks for the bus rides and everything. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I'm so excited. The kids are so excited. I love seeing how excited they are. Um, I will be following up with an email and all of this information that you saw. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Come to conferences tomorrow and bug me about it. Um, I'm more than willing to chat about it extra if you have any questions. So, Muchas gracias. Thank you. Oh no, you're okay.